We'll start with Ben Garrett. Kevin, Derek, getting the call on Friday. Just um, what have you seen from him this week and kind of what can he carry over from um, last last start against Vanderbilt? Yeah, you know, he's he's looked great for us lately. Uh, gave us a really good start uh, against Vandy in that second game. And it's got to pitch a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we love when he's out on the mound. He's going to give us a good outing. Go to John. Hey, uh, Kevin, what kind of makes Dylan Dodd such a uh, dangerous uh, pitcher from what you've seen? Uh, I haven't looked too much into it yet, so uh, I'll learn more tomorrow. Parrish Alford. Kevin, uh, what do you think about uh, Ole Miss offensively going into this regional? We saw you guys get timely hitting against good pitching in Hoover. We've seen you all uh, – I guess, put up bigger numbers at other times during the season. How, how do you feel where you guys are offensively? Yeah, I love where we're at. Um, I mean, we've proven all year that we've got an uh, incredible offense top to bottom. It's just relentless. It won't give away at bats, and that's what you need come postseason. Uh, guys that just go in there, compete, and uh, get the time hit. Do you know much about any of the teams? I know you hadn't looked at uh, SEMO much yet. Uh, did you keep up uh, TV or anything, some of Miss, uh, Florida State? No, yeah, I haven't really uh, paid too much close attention to, to schools not named Ole Miss this year. So, um, yeah, I'll learn, I'll learn more than we need to know. Nick? Kevin, you guys got really hot offensively in the regional two years ago. Do you remember kind of what you guys did that allowed you to swing so well for three days straight? Yeah, I think come postseason time, nobody's really worried about anything other than winning ball games. So every time you step in that box, uh, you're just trying to give as good of an at bat and as competitive at bat as you can for your guys in the dugout. Uh, and that's kind of freeing uh, experience as a hitter. You know, you you know the next guy's got you if you don't pick him up. Um, yeah, and that's just the way we go out and attack pitchers, just competing as hard as we can, um, and not worrying about the results, just giving the best AB we can. Back to Ben. Obviously, Kevin, no one expected a full year plus layoff since the last appearance due to COVID and all that kind of stuff. So as a player, how excited are you just to get back to this moment where y'all can finally be playing postseason baseball in Oxford again? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, that's what you play for. That's what you play all year for is uh, postseason baseball. There's just a whole different feeling when you get into a regional or super regional. Uh, there's a whole different vibe in the dugout and at the stadium, and I can't wait for it. So it's going to be awesome this weekend. Nick Suss? excuse me for not knowing Missouri geography too well, but how familiar are you with SEMO from growing up around there? Uh, not too familiar. It's actually like right in between here and back home for me. So it's really not, not too close. Um, but I do know quite a few guys over there that are just from the St. Louis area. Parrish. Hey, uh, Kevin, um, uh, there are a lot of Ole Miss fans who believe that uh, it's like Omaha or bust that you guys have to get to the, College World Series, uh, a lot of high expectations. Uh, how do you guys, uh, as players, what, what do you think about those kinds of expectations? I mean, I think we always expect to go to Omaha uh, from the beginning of the fall, but you can't you can't look at that now. You just got to go win the first game on Friday and go from there. Are there any other questions for Kevin? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Up next is Derek Diamond. If you have any questions for Derek, please raise your hand. Ben Garrett. Derek, getting the call for Friday, man. What can you build off of as far as the Vanderbilt start? What did you pick up from that game? And kind of what was the approach that maybe you can carry over now in the regional play? Um, you know, just like you said, uh, let it carry over. 
Um, hasn't been too much. Uh, I've been working on, you know, physically. That's crazy. It's just having the mindset of going out there and knowing that you're going to win. So um, I think that's all it is. You know, doesn't matter who we play. I'm just going to go out and do what I do. When Coach Bianco talked to you about being the starter on Friday night and getting this thing started, what was just your response to it and your excitement level as far as being the first one out there? Oh, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. Um, it's a great opportunity, so I can't wait. But, um, you know, I kind of knew there was a shot that it might not be Doug going first. Um, they talked to me. They talked to McDaniel. They said, you know, it might be one of you guys, so be ready. And we've been on long rest, so it's nothing we had to really worry about. But a few days ago, the coaches told me that it'd be me. So, you know, I'm fired up, get to open the thing up and play some playoff ball at Swayze. So it's going to be awesome. Nick Suss. Derek, we've heard Mike talk a lot this year about you needing to get better at controlling and regulating your emotions on the mound. What's that process been like for you and kind of what have you had to tell yourself to be a little bit more calm uh, when you're throwing? You know, I don't, I don't know if it's being more calm or if it's being more consistent in what I show, but, um, you know, you've seen we've got a lot of guys on our staff that like to show a lot of emotion. It's uh, It's pretty cool, I think. I think, you know, it's it's something that's starting to define us and it helps a lot of guys. But what you really got to do is figure out what works for you. And um, I guess, uh, you know, sometimes when you're when you're having trouble, the emotion you show and, you know, just how you look out there can be a big impact on that. So I've just had to, you know, change a few things about how I look and it really has an effect on the mindset. So um, I don't know if it's me being more controlled or me being more fired up, but um, I feel a lot more comfortable out there now. Is that hard? an adjustment to make or is it kind of coming natural? Um, you know, it's, it's not too hard. You know, if you want to, if you want to be calm, that's not tough. You know, as a pitcher, your, your goal is to throw up zeros. So when you throw up zeros, you don't need to get fired up, but if that's what helps you throw up zeros, then, you know, go ahead and do it, but it's not too tough either way. Parrish Alford. Uh, Derek, this is uh, your first season to really go a complete season. Obviously, uh, last year being cut short. Uh, what, what have you learned? What have you learned uh, that you didn't know at the beginning? Oh, I've learned a ton this year. You know, last year playing 17 games, it was awesome. And that team was that team was great to be a part of. It was a great experience. Um, but I learned, I'll be honest, I, I feel like I learned nothing compared to what I've learned this year. You know, just going through a full season, um, way more games than playing in high school or anything I've done before. You know, the ups and downs of it, winning, going through the SEC. I couldn't begin to tell you how much I've learned. But, um, you know, believing in yourself, believing in your team and staying consistent is sounds pretty simple. But that's that's I think the keys to success for us. We've seen you pitch really well at times. We've seen you have some shorter outings. When you talk about consistency, what, what goes into that? How, how do you achieve a greater level of consistency? You know, it could be a bunch of things. But for me, it's been it's been a lot of mindset. Um, and like I was just talking about, just the way I look and present myself, the way that I want to present myself, um, you know, that, that has a ton to do with it. Physically, I've, I've felt pretty, you know, pretty consistent all year. But Mentally, you know, that's where that's where the major adjustments come. So that's what it's been, and I'm feeling really good going into the tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, sir. John Sokoloff. Hey, Derek. Uh, what, what kind of has practice been like this week? Do you kind of think that, you know, it's been a little bit more, uh, more ramped up? No, no, it's, it hasn't been more ramped up. Um, you know, when you look around, you definitely see a little extra tick of focus on a bunch of guys, but we, we don't ramp up, you know. As you guys know, that's not us. You know, we play loose and we believe in each other and we know we're good, so we're not going to change anything now. And uh, I, obviously you get in the ball tomorrow. What have you – have you done much uh, looking into Southeast Missouri's kind of lineup and scouting and what's the report on them at the plate? Oh, I've started. I've started. Um, you know, there's more to do. I'm going to chart some games, check them out. But, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter who we play now. It just matters how we play. Nick us. Derek, when you look back six or seven weeks ago and think about when you got moved from the rotation to the bullpen, just how different of a pitcher do you think you are now than then? Um, I think I've changed a lot. I think I've changed a lot. I think I've learned a lot. Um, you know, like I said, uh, well, well, like I've said to a bunch of my friends, um, moving to the bullpen, I'd be lying if I said I didn't learn a ton about myself, my arm, even the whole game. Um, so. 
it's been a learning experience and uh, I feel really good about, you know, what I've learned moving to the pen and then moving back to being a starter. Um, you know, the whole, the whole cycle helps. So feel good. Is there anything specific you learned? Um, you know, it's, I learned that mindset is the most important thing. I learned that if you feel great, you know, taking care of yourself physically is the easy part. Um, when you got to take care of yourself mentally, you know, we do a lot of work with the mental game. Like in the fall, we study uh, with Brian Kane, who's a mental specialist and, uh, you know, using those techniques that we learn help a lot. And then, you know, finding what you need to do for yourself helps a lot. Let's go to Trey. Yeah, how important, Derek, was it this past week in Hoover for you, Tyler, and the rest of the staff to put up a lot of zeros on the scoreboard to kind of, you know, show that, you know, it's not, it's not just Doug, the one out there that can, you know, go deep into a game. I mean, it, it was it was great to see what we did out there. It was it was not unbelievable, but it was awesome to see us, you know, come into ourselves and and dominate like we did. Um, you know, Gunner going down was a shot to the heart for everybody, but that was a that was just an emotion. You know, we know that we're going to be fine without him, um, and I think guys were excited to step up and have an opportunity. There's some more innings to eat away now that he's gone. So instead of you know falling back and being scared, guys were excited. Are there any other questions for Derek? All right, thanks, Derek. Thanks, you guys. All right, if you have any questions for Coach Bianco, please raise your hand and you'll be called on. We'll start with Chase Parham. Hey, Mike, just I guess in general, what would you uh, like about Derek for Friday night? What went into that decision? Well, uh, you know, we've talked about it, I think, a bunch this week, uh, you know, obviously with the staff to make the decision and then with you guys. Uh, and, I, and I think you've heard it before. At, at the end of the day, uh, the, the goal is to – we want to win game one. No doubt about it, uh, but the goal is to win uh, the regional and to, to move on. And we thought because of the matchups, looking at all the all three teams, um, this gives us the best opportunity to, to get through the first two games. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of people would look at it where, you know, Southeast Missouri, there's, you know, four seed. But, uh, they're probably the best fourth seed in the country, you know, a team that not only won their tournament, so they're playing well, but they've, they've won the regular season. They got a pitcher of the year and an ace that would be an ace on any staff and Dylan Dodd. Uh, they, they, uh, they present a lot of problems, you know, for, for any team, not just Ole Miss. And so, uh, but fortunately, you know, we got a guy like Derek that we think can handle it, you know, uh, that he's, you know, an ace in his own regard. A uh, guy that's, you know, has pitched well the last two weekends. I thought he pitched well at Georgia. Uh, certainly pitched well in the Southeastern Conference tournament. So uh, we think he's ready. What do you see from Dodd's game? I'm sorry? What do you see from Dodd's game, the pitcher for SEMA? Um, terrific. You know, terrific, you know, left-handed guy with a, with, a, with a dominant fastball, fastball in the low 90s. He'll mix in a couple of different breaking balls. It looks like on film, you know, a curve and a slider and a change up. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, you know, uh, the, the fastball, you know, is, 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 is really good and, uh, you know, beats a lot of people. And, uh, and he's had success, you know, uh, uh, the entire season. You know, when, when, you, when you look at those numbers, I mean, obviously you've seen the statistics. Uh, you don't get, you know, get those types of numbers without being, you know, outstanding on the mound and being outstanding, you know, every week. Parrish Alford. Um, Mike, we, you mentioned that uh, Derek has pitched well his last two outings. We've seen him uh, pitch well. We've seen him have, have some shorter starts. Uh, what goes into consistency for him? What does he need to do to – become more consistent in, in going deeper into games more regularly? Um, it uh, seems like a simple answer, but, it, but it's not. I think, you know, sometimes when you look back at the starts, uh, there's outings where 
uh, he's made good pitches and it can happen, you know, where, you know, they just get hit, you know, and, uh, you know, at the wrong time and uh, balls fall into a gap, guy, you know, give up a home run. Uh, if you look back at the, the, the Vanderbilt game, he, he actually didn't pitch that poorly. He actually pitched pretty good, uh, you know, up into the end there uh, where he walked a couple people, but uh, uh, some of those wind dated balls where again, you know, credit them, but, you know, there were good pitches and balls that were struck well. Uh, but then, you know, what Derek alluded to, I think is different where, where you start to, and you guys kind of hammered it on him left. They were sitting back there going, wow, there's some tough questions. Uh, but I think, you know, in, in, in a nutshell, what he was trying to say and what I think he's, he's learned and what a lot of the young pitchers learn is to be more of themselves out there. I think, you know, um, uh, they, they try to keep things calm. They try to uh, stay in the moment. And sometimes a guy like uh, Derek, um, they, they, it almost goes too much, you know, to where they, they lose some of their aggressiveness. They lose some of the, you know, they, you know, especially Derek being, you know, one of the best athletes on the team, you know, Omaha challenge champion two, two years in a row. So this guy's a position player, pitcher, uh, you know, he loses, loses that aggressiveness and trying to calm himself down and stay in the moment. And sometimes that's not a good thing. And so, you know, we've talked about it the last couple of weeks of, you know, be aggressive, go after him. It's all right. Uh, not everybody has to show the emotion that Doug shows and not everyone that's really good does that. Uh, but you got to be yourself and you, you got to be more in attack mode. And, and I think the last few weeks he's done that. He's got tremendous stuff. As you know, he's going to throw the ball in the low to mid nineties. Uh, he's got an outstanding slider and change up. He's a guy, he's a guy that really commands it. Well, uh, he's the total package. Uh, but I think sometimes we forget that he's a freshman, you know, and, you know, we, you know, him and Drew, we've put a lot on them. And, uh, you know, and once you lost Gunner, you know, Gunner uh, and Doug could, could take that, that weight a lot, you know, uh, in the first two games. Uh, but once you lose Gunner and you're putting so much now on two freshmen, um, you know, I think sometimes you, know, you, you see some of their uh, deficiencies uh, or, or where they need to mature. But, you know, certainly that was a long answer, but you guys have asked it several different times. So I thought I'd give it to you. <laughs> what uh, what did Derek and Drew and, and so many others, what did these guys who were freshmen last year miss uh, by having that season cut short from a developmental standpoint? I mean, how has that uh, affected? I think what we just said. I think, yeah. you know, you got to remember that, you know, it's, it's such a weird year that they would have done this last year, right? And so this year they'd be sophomores. They'd be a year, not just a year in the calendar, but a year of getting punched in the face, having, you know, uh, success, then the next week, not having success, trying to find your breaking ball, pitching in a regional, you know, you know, those types of things that help everybody mature. Everybody talks about experience that, that that's, that's the whole thing that those guys, Chatney, Dunhurst, they've all lost. Uh, not just our guys, other guys, guys that are sitting in the other dugout, Southern Miss and SEMO and, and so on. And so, all of that, that that you learn in a year, and it's hard to say a breaking ball. It's hard to just say, you know, handling adversity. It's all of that. God bless you. Um, but um, so, Nick us. Mike, how did what you got last week from guys like Myers and Adcock kind of affect the way you handle the bullpen this weekend? Um, I don't think just them. I, I think, you know, last weekend was, was big, uh, or last week, I should say, was big for us on, on a lot of fronts. Uh, you know, uh, first, what we've just been talking about, Drew, and, and uh, for Derek to, 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 to have a good outing, uh, you know, I think going into regionals. Uh, I think that's, that was, you know, good from a, a mental standpoint and feeling good about themselves. Uh, but when you go to the bullpen uh, and you look at a lot of those bullpen pieces pitching well, uh, Doherty continuing to pitch well and having another really good outing, you know, uh, uh, for uh, Brandon Johnson, who's pitched well, and I, you know, I lose track, but maybe five or six times in a row now, you know, good leading back to Vanderbilt, where I thought he pitched well in relief there in a game that we got beat up on this, the game two. Um, but he pitched well in his outing there, pitched well in the midweek, pitched well at, at, at Georgia, and then had three really good outings uh, at the SEC tournament. So, you know, you know, becoming, a, you know, I think, a valuable piece. Of course, Myers uh, looking as good and sharp 
even though it was a start, I think you're alluding to, you know, that still was, you know, outstanding. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, Cody, uh, you know, pitching really well against a, another really good team in Arkansas. So, um, you know, the more the merrier there. You know, it's, po it's postseason and, you know, uh, uh, you need all the arms that you can get. And, you know, you know I think now uh, not only do we feel more comfortable, I think, as a staff, but I think they feel and the team feels like this is, this is their role now. You know that, that they can do this and they can do it on a big stage. And when you do it in the SEC tournament, uh, it's it's pretty special. We saw you use uh, Taylor and Brandon multiple times last week. This time of year, how willing are you, or how reliant are you on guys who can go two, three times in a weekend? Um, they can go when they can go. So you know, um, yeah, there is you know there is no next week unless you win this week. And so uh, I say that which, you know, I, I think, you know, Nick, and, you know, I think everybody here uh, understands, you know, you can't pitch a guy that's not capable, a guy that, you know, just doesn't have it. But we kind of go through a, a deal, which you've heard me say before, where, you know, they'll stretch, they'll do their, their, their pregame throwing, and then, you know, Lafferty will kind of take a, a roll, roll call almost before the game. And a lot of that we won't get until about uh, 10 minutes beforehand. Now, some of them we know, obviously, they're fine. They haven't pitched yet or they you know, pitched, you know, the other day. But guys that pitched on Friday when you're asking them Saturday, how do they feel? You know, and, and uh, Taylor will tell us, you know, and he told, told us a couple times in the tournament, you know, um, he was a little sore. And, uh, you know, and so um, and then he's also told us, hey, yeah, I got the ninth and I'm good and I feel great. Uh, or I got more. And so we'll, you know, we trust them. This is something that this just didn't happen this week. This has been happening since September, you know, in inner squad games and everything else. So I think they trust us, they being the staff, the pitching staff. And, and obviously we, we have to trust them uh, because, you know, uh, we don't want to run them out there if they can't do it uh, for a lot of reasons. One, certainly their, their health, but the other is because we're trying to win. And, you know, you don't want to run somebody out there that's, you know, physically, you know, not at their best. And so uh, we'll take all that in, in, into consideration. But, you know, we're here to win. And so uh, uh, we're, we're not counting pitches. We're not uh, uh, looking for days off. We're, we're trying to, to, to win games. And when guys are able to and physically can do it, then, you know, we'll run them out there. Trey? Trey. Yeah, Mike, I feel like you see it a lot every or maybe not a lot but just a few times every year where a team you know bows out quickly in the sec tournament then makes a run in the postseason and then vice versa i guess from your standpoint from a team that made a deep run into hoover last week how do you make sure that you know you kind of bottle up that momentum and keep it going yeah uh it's a great question and and i've been here obviously trey for a long time you know that uh, there's no rhyme or reason you know uh it's it's kind of fascinating i've watched guys like you said get eliminated in on that tuesday and then make a huge run in postseason i've also you know you watched uh uh vanderbilt you know win the, the sec tournament and then go on to win a national championship uh, in 2019 so i've seen it both ways and uh, uh you know to, to look and say hey they're tired or this or that nah they're come on they're 19 to 22 year old kids uh, I, I think that's our job we knew that you know we played five days in a row uh, they were off on sunday uh, you know, Monday's practice was pretty light. Our, our practice that we probably got the most out of them and pushed them a little bit was Tuesday. Yesterday, we were in shorts and it was a light practice. We didn't even think we'd get outside, although we did uh, because of the rain. We were, we were planning on just hitting inside. So yesterday was pretty light. Today, you know, was about an hour and five minutes on the field in the NCA practice. So, you know, our guys are rested and ready to go. And I think as a coach, you just kind of gauge that about your run. There's been times where, you know, we've made a short appearance in the SEC tournament and you had to throw some guys you had to come back and inner squad and get some pitchers to get some work and uh, uh so we've been on both ends of it but you know we're comfortable where we are right now does anybody else have a question for coach all right coach thanks for your time all right thanks guys reminder that this recording will be provided on our ftp as well as the Ole Miss youtube channel thank you uh, and this same link will be utilized for all three of the other press conferences this afternoon See you guys again soon. Thanks, Seth.